So my first job out of college, I got a job at this magazine called Metal Progress. That's metal, not mental. And it was published by a technical society. And I was all excited in my first job. And I go to the store and I buy like uh, 10 short sleeve white shirts. And then I go to drug fair and buy uh, uh, two ties, one completely red, one completely black. And there's a little tag on the back that says La Bella Collection. They're all 100% polyester. And so I go and I'm all excited and it's just kind of sweet and I get there and at that point the sweetness ends. Now you know how the, w different workplaces have different workplace cultures and you have the culture of appreciation or innovation or customer service. This place had the culture of you're fired. <laughs> and people got fired all the time for all sorts of reasons. It wasn't unusual to see someone sort of trudging to their car at 4.45 um, <laughs> with their head down carrying their box. And it was like they, they died and you would never see them again. So um, there was like this sort of uh, oral history that all everybody talked about was people getting fired, past, present, and future. And so there are all these sort of apocryphal stories about spectacular firings, for example. There's a guy who got fired on his way to his car in the parking lot. There's this woman who went on vacation and when she got back her desk had been cleaned off because she had been fired. And then there was this editor who had been fired, and then he put, he, and as the story went, he put his head down on his desk and cried like a baby. And the reason everybody knew that was because all the walls were glass, so everybody could see into everybody's office and they could see you. And you, you would just look into people's office and look into their souls and try to figure out who was next. <laughs> so you could also look into the boss's office, um, and his name was Mr. Waverly, and he was the guy who fired people. And he, he was kind of like, uh, a serial, he was kind of like a serial killer, like he, he, he liked, <laughs> the way a serial killer likes to kill, he liked to fire. And <laughs> he was kind of this mixture of sociopath slash alcoholic. And um, so with this kind of work environment, it's not surprising that people just kind of lost their minds. So I want to talk about three particular departures that kind of stand out. Okay, the first one, I had this like snow globe on my desk and one day it just disappeared and all these people, Everybody had, you know, you have crap on your desk and things just started disappearing. So we had just recently hired this guy, he was kind of odd. And one day he went down and stole a piece of cake from the executive dining room and someone saw him and he got fired. So they cleaned his desk out and he had all this crap in his desk that he had stolen. He was a kleptomaniac. <laughs> and at the bottom of his desk drawer, there was a note. It was kind of like a, a to-do list. And at the bottom of the, of the to-do list, it said, take cake. You know, <laughs> as if it was this, you know, heist like Ocean's Eleven that he'd been planning for weeks or something. So that's one. The second departure, we had this uh, sales manager who was kind of hapless, and he thought it would be really good for morale if he held, held a contest. And what he did was he had stationery with his picture on the upper left-hand corner of him smiling. So he handed a, a piece of the stationery out to everybody, and the contest was everybody could alter that picture in any way they wanted to, <laughs> and wh whoever was the most creative would win the, win the contest. So people just went nuts and, you know, were like drawing antenna on his head and whiting out his face and dunce caps and stuff like that. And Mr. Waverly, our boss, he, he submitted an entry, and what he did was he cut out this like really graphic picture out of penthouse and superimposed it on this guy's head. <laughs> And then Mr. Waverly was the judge, and he decided that his entry was the best, so he won. <laughs> and can you imagine this happening today? I mean, this is the 80s. And um, so the, the, the sales manager ended up getting fired, poor judgment. Third departure was mine. Um, <laughs> Mr. Waverly invited me to lunch at the Trout Club, which is where he went every day to drink. And the trout club was this place where they had this like fake pond and they catch your fish and you go in and then you have your own liquor in a locker and <laughs> just drink as much as you want. And so I'm thinking, okay, this is it. I'm going to become the guy who got fired at the trout club. And so um, the general the rule with him was that the nicer he was to you, the more likely you were to get fired because he kind of liked to soften you up, you know. So we're, we're, ha we're having lunch and drinking rye whiskey or something I'd never heard of before. And <laughs> I'm thinking, okay, here it comes, here it comes. And he's telling me these horrible, stupid, dirty jokes and degrading everybody in the office and complaining about his wife, and it's just horrible. But he never fires me. So 
the next day I think, okay, today he's going to fire me. So because we have these glass offices, I'm constantly looking into his office. And every time he gets up, I think, oh, okay, now he's going to come, come over here and fire me. And how am I going to react? Am I going to put my head down on my desk and cry like a baby? And um, so the third day, the phone rings. And it's this uh, place in Washington offering me a job that I had applied for six months earlier and I'd forgotten about. Um, so I took it. I go into his office and tell him that I was giving two weeks notice. And he... He was actually really normal about it. Oh, sorry to see you go. And he had this party for me, and there was cake at the party. <laughs> and ever since, um, I've never known for sure whether, if I hadn't gotten that job, if I was going to be next. Thanks.